Uh, hello, YouTube. This is Bailey Mage again. Welcome back. And we're all getting excited for Path of Exile again. Uh, we, we're recording this the day before the announcement for Settlers of Kalga. So announcement will be happening in the morning. What we've got to go over today is 14 teasers that have happened. The last two weeks straight, we've been running a teaser every single day. And in order to get back into making videos and to catch everybody up, in case you missed any or all of them, we're going to rapid fire through all 14 of these teasers so that you will know what's up if you haven't been paying attention all in one video. So there'll be a link to Path of Exile's Twitter just in case you need to click on that if you want to watch any of these videos through properly. If something in here super excites you and you want to get a really good look at it, we'll have a really good look at it. But we're going to start at the beginning two weeks ago. First of all, this thing is full of quality of life improvements. There's a few balanced things, but ooh, so much quality of life coming. So to start with, uh, the first teaser we got, reservation effects, auras and such, no longer turn off on death. We do have a little example here of them just uh, playing and dying and then resurrecting and boom, all their auras are still on. That, that's amazing. I, I love that. Uh, one thing worth noting, if you'll notice right here, there is a dead ancestral protector totem on the floor. There is no ancestral protector in this build. It doesn't make sense that it would have an ancestral protector. This is not an accident. It's in every single teaser for the last two weeks. No mention of it whatsoever. Absolutely no mention of it whatsoever. But it's been lying on the floor dead and not on the skill bar in every single teaser the entire week. So I suspect ancestral protector might be dead uh and maybe maybe that's gonna make melee a little bit shit less shit to play so moving on great stuff auras persist through death now we don't have to turn all of our auras back on again absolutely fantastic next some minor quality of life things like harvest that's it single click start your harvest it's not a huge deal but it is quite useful i farmed harvest in the past that has been annoying it doesn't make sense you can't even double click them you click once the button moves you have to move and click again uh, I, I don't know why we ever had to do that cool little quality of life thing fine next little quality of life thing we've got uh waypoints Waypoints getting activated automatically. You don't have to click them anymore. You just boop, go in, walk next to it. Absolutely just, just, just activate it as you walk past. That's really nice. I don't know how many people like me have forgotten to activate a waypoint on the way past. I'm bad in it. I probably do it at least three or four times a league. Uh, I'm just happy that that exists still just a minor quality of life thing not a really big deal at all uh the next one we've got is quality so we've reworked they've reworked how quality works and it does not matter anymore how what the rarity of an item is whether it is normal magic rare or unique it now matters what its item level is so on a low item level piece it will give you 20 percent quality all in one go which is great that means it's probably now far more worth using on lower level pieces of level especially on a league start this is probably something pretty relevant for people's league starts especially for weapons and like shields and body armors and things where you would get a lot of defense out of quality isn't bad but it was never worth using you know 10 armor scraps or whatever while leveling it might be worth using one little hidden note in this one there's that totem again i was talking about uh they did show us the night weave robe uh for anyone who doesn't know why that's important uh it's brand new level 78 required and it maxes out at 260 base energy shield before quality the valbregalia the current highest base maxes out at 197 base that's insane this leads us to think 
a lot of different armors will have much higher base values this is probably to make up for the aura nerf which we saw like briefly in one of the teasers we were we were shown determination just as like a quick mouse over it wasn't the point of the teaser and the number values were a bit lower i think this stuff is going to counter that the idea was to put a little more emphasis on my gear and a little less emphasis on my defensive auras that's my guess but we only saw the energy shield one either way that is a lot more base energy shield than this so goodbye Val Regalias and hello Nightweave Robes. I wonder how many more bases we get. Um, that'll be very interesting. But yeah, so there's that. And because this is a high level piece, when they add it, it only goes two at a time. Right? Even though it's a normal, it's two quality at a time because it's a high item level piece, 20 quality all at once when it's low. And that changes as you level up. So cool, cool. Moving on. Next one also to do with item quality item quality on armor and weapons is now multiplicative meaning you don't have 20 percent increased armor on that piece when you quality up you have 20 percent more armor on that when you quality it up which means a few things uh one it means all of our bases are worth far more right even the ones that already exist on top of that it means the new ones that have much higher values like the night weave we just saw also going to be much larger and then third it means the 20 the 30 percent qualitying things either with fossils or by beast corrupting it or whatever other ways we have to get quality 30 percent quality means a lot more than it used to so that's really cool um i am a little curious here and we didn't get the answer about what kind of things the um harvest bench is going to do so we're, I'm a little personally concerned about the Harvest Bench. It has quality crafts on it. You know, quality gives you like 1% area per 8% um, quality. If those don't add up, like with quality now being multiplicative, uh, if those don't get changed at all, I'm not sure how useful they're going to be. So hopefully they get changed. Ooh, okay. This is the first big one that affects uh, pretty much everyone that I absolutely love. Uh, we're getting the static life bars from PUE2. Which means, as soon as the boss fight, fight starts, you get this bar up the top here. And you don't have to mouse over this, and you don't have to target it. It just has to be in the vicinity, and you will just get a static life bar of the boss fight you're fighting. Even when you walk away, even when you're walking in the other direction. So, this won't be on every single boss in the game. They did say outright. Uh, all the pinnacles and act bosses will get them right away uh, and they're working on adding it to everybody else so very good this is this is one of the really good quality of life things in poe 2 was even when you were busy dodging or trying not to get hit or just didn't even know that you'd encountered a boss yet because you were running real quick suddenly that boss bar would appear on your screen you knew what was up really good love that right Moving on. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, I love this one. This is my favorite. Um, increased pickup range. Here is the new pickup range compared to the old pickup range. We got extendo arms. Uh, we get to pick stuff up from far away now, which is fantastic. Here is the demonstration. All right. This is how close that guy had to get. Insane, right? There's, a, there's an, another example right here where you can just see it. Isn't that nice? Extender arms, my favorite. All right. Next teaser. New blight oils. These guys right here. Prismatics. And most importantly, a whole bunch of, although they didn't show us many, but a whole bunch of new hidden notables. So these are the notables that we can anoint, but don't exist on the passive tree. There are already a few of them. We know we know them. We've used them before. Plenty of those. A bunch more of those have been added. And as an example, we got shown this one, which mwah, elusive reduces in effect 50% slower and elusive is removed from you at 20% effect. So this is really good for two reasons in case anybody doesn't get it. 
elusive grants all these buffs that are that are right there however those buffs are what it would be if it was 100 you can get way more than 100 elusive you can get like 150 180 200 whatever but it then burns down expires eventually goes all the way to zero and you can't reapply elusive until you reach zero and it falls off there's you can't do that this makes it fall off at 20 percent that's good because that means the lowest 20 percent of the effect you would have just disappears and you can just reapply the full one but also making it move slower means you have to reapply it less which is yeah that's fine but the removing at 20 percent amazing because that that cuts out the entire lower 20 percent of elusive so that's actually really really strong or this one which confuses the crap out of me five percent increased cooldown recovery rate for throwing traps per mine detonated recently i don't know who's doing that um i have absolutely no idea who's doing that i'm not sure who that one's for i'm sure we'll see if that works into a build at some point i'm just as confused as you are that's fine moving on oh, oh. there is a sixth map slot device now now i'm gonna i'm gonna turn the uh the sound on for this one because uh this is worth watching this one was a bit of a nightmare for our ui designers you don't want to see the prototypes or maybe you do the fifth okay <laughs> the prototypes quite funny uh don't love any of them actually i kind of like this one the most but with six map slot devices that is i don't even know what to do there's been a lot of there's been a lot of speculation about what we do with these six map slot devices i want everybody to calm down just a tiny bit because we don't know how they're reworking scarabs we just know that they're probably not leaving everything exactly how it is so in the announcement tomorrow when we find out what all the new scarabs are we get to get real excited about this how they are unlocked is one one will be unlocked from doing a tier 17 encounter and the, the other one will be unlocked from your first 10 way maven encounter which is quite a bit earlier in progression so you'll have that five slot map device real early so that's really cool too all right moving on bandit rewards have changed this one's great um this is this is actually quite interesting for me uh oak is going to be giving 40 flat maximum life and then uh alira is just going to only grant the 15 all res and then my personal favorite and the one i'll be taking creighton grants you eight percent movement speed now you might think none of those seem worth it but they have also changed the hand in for taking no reward like not helping no bandit to only be one passive point for the other passive point you're going to have to do the fell shrine ruins quest that's where the other passive point is going to come from it's fine that won't be a really big issue we got the same amount of skill points total but it means any one of those things either 40 flat life 15 all res or eight percent movement speed is put up against one passive instead of two so that's a lot better that's a lot a lot more manageable i'm probably taking the eight percent movement speed because i'm who i am as a person but there we go all right moving on simulacrums always been boring as crap to me uh this might change it simulacrums now only have 15 waves they have pulled the first 15 waves out of simulacrums entirely so wave one is the equivalent of what wave 16 used to be um, they've also smushed more rewards together and made the uniques the specific uniques that are specific to simulacrum uh more common so we will see like more voices and other things like that and we get to start from what is essentially old wave 16 
is now wave one. So that's far more interesting and probably far more rewarding. And seeing me lacrim farming might be the go again. I'm going to be honest. I think it was always the go. Like it was always something profitable, but it was never something I wanted to do because you had to spend so much time in the boring waves and before you got to anything that was even remotely hard. And I just didn't love that. Uh, quick note, um, there's that totem there. It's in every one of these teasers, by the way. Every single one of them. Uh, yep, moving on. All right next this one's a little bit cool and has a little bit of a hidden thing in it um they're doing something with div cards but just a quality of life thing they made it so that when you mouse over maps on your atlas uh you get to see what div cards drop there now that's very cool but the astuta you might notice that we're looking at burial chambers and that does not say the doctor so i don't know where the cards are going uh, but they're going somewhere. Um, it also kind of looks like here. It looks like there's only four per map. And I'm not sure how that's going to work because there's too many div cards for that to be the case. So I don't know what div card rework is happening. Um, we do know that the entire lack of Atlas stones right here, uh, that was that was a mistake. That was posted about on, on Reddit and the guys from ggg was like yo yo we just cheated map completion and we forgot to do the quest for the watchstones for the video so like don't read into this this is the watchstones are still there they just didn't do the quests for the recording of the video they just like did the cheat to get all maps completed so they could record this bit and forgot to turn the quest in so that's don't freak out it's fine our watchstones are still there <laughs> next uh, this one's pretty simple. This is just uh, Valdo's puzzle boxes got made significantly more common, um, but they balanced the boxes down so that the same amount of mage blood and headhunter style rewards would be entering the economy, but far more people would get to open the boxes. So less quality overall in the boxes, less better rewards in the boxes, but far more boxes dropping because opening boxes is fun and everybody likes dopamine. So that's fine. I'm cool with that. And last, but certainly not least, the teaser that came out the day before the announcement, which is right now, today. The Wildwood's back. There's a chance for the Wildwood to spawn. All we know about this is that it will not have the NPCs in it. You will not have the, uh, the Wildwood Ascendancies. They're not coming back with this, but we will have Wildwood Juice. I don't know if it's going to be in the Atlas tree. I don't know what's going on. If they put it in the Atlas tree, if I can get Wildwood 100% of the time, I guess that's the only thing I'll ever do again. So yeah, that could be, this is going to be polarizing. I think some people are going to love Wildwood. Some people loved Wildwood during the league, but don't want it to come back. I don't even know where i stand uh wildwood was really fun to me so i think i want it yeah that is that is that is very cool that is the full list of teasers you are now caught all the way up to live uh with an announcement coming out i imagine somewhere between 12 and 15 hours from now uh i hope everybody's as excited as i am this patch looks huge i'd like to remind everyone that everything that you've seen today in this patch is the stuff that wasn't good enough to hold on to until the live announcement this is all just like the teaser worthy stuff so i'm hoping we're gonna do quite well uh, that is all I have. I will see everybody tomorrow for the live announcement. Goodbye.